Hey guys, Tyler here, and this is the Garage Warrior podcast and videocast, and I'm super excited today to have on the call David Delanave. How's it going, David? Good, man. Did I pronounce your last name right? Yeah, you nailed it. Okay, perfect. All right, so I was a little worried about that just for about a half a second there. So David, uh, David is a, is a biofeedback expert, which is a, a system of training that goes off of intuition. Very interesting stuff. I've been familiar with it for several years and tinkered around with it uh, myself quite a bit. But before we dig into intuitive training, David, um, maybe you can give us like a 50,000-mile view, who, who you are, how did you come to get where you are today, and what are you hoping to teach people? Sure. Um, so I, um, I got into the strength game a whole bunch of years ago. Um, and I think I got lucky. Um, I kind of came in through the whole Dragon Door, RKC, Kettlebell route. I actually, I wasn't an RKC, but that's, that was my introduction, which I feel like introduced me to sort of some of the smarter and better training out there right. versus a lot of the dumb stuff you can, you can do and see. So I got into that. Um, I got, at the time I was doing, um, internet marketing and development, uh, software development for like online marketing and stuff. And I was just getting more and more passionate about the training side. So I kind of started training people. And then um, I got out of the, the online business. And I was like, you know, what am I going to do next? I actually um, sold the company, had a big, you know, exit. And I was like, okay, I need a new direction. Um, so I decided to open a gym here in Minneapolis. And I had just um, recently before that learned the whole biofeedback uh, method and all that stuff and and I really felt like that was a game changer and I wanted more people to realize it because it's like there's so much you know there's so many boot camps that are just killing people out there and CrossFit that are hurting people and I just wanted to show people how easy it can be like you just show up put in the work keep it easy your body adapts and you get better and better so that's kind of uh, what I'm trying to do. Yeah, awesome, man. Yeah, and I'm sure you're going to have a lot more in detail as we go on with the call. I'm so grateful you mentioned the whole Dragon Door side of things. This is the same kind of path I entered in, found their books in 2003, did the RKC in 2005, and it just really does expose you to some really intelligent people because there's a lot of just absolute crap out there right now, right? Yeah. Yep, for sure. So, and, you know, say what you will about about them. They can be a little dogmatic, but you will find some of the better movement people anywhere in that organization and in that kind of area. So it, it's good. Yeah, absolutely. So, so one of the things I like to dig into with people is like, what do you think's going wrong with the fitness industry these days, David? You know, like, like, uh, you know, like Dragon Door is obviously something that not a lot of people are exposed to. Biofeedback is certainly not something that a lot of people are aware of at this point. Um, right. And, and, you know, we're still, we're still battling Zumba, yeah. right? And, yeah, and, and right. P90X and stuff. What do you think's wrong with that? You know, I, it's a weird industry because it's kind of like as a whole, we've all sort of shot ourselves in the foot by this sort of reductionist marketing where it's like, you know, if you just do this one thing, <laughs> it's everything will be amazing. And it's not, it's not that simple and it's not that absolute. Nothing works for everybody. Sure. You know, you really have to experiment for yourself and more effort is not the answer, but it's the easiest way to tell people. Um, it's the easiest thing you can tell people is, oh, you're not getting results? Well, you're not working hard enough. Got to you know, diet I, harder and exercise yeah, more. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I read um, Dave Tate's squat manual the other day, and there was some really good information in there. But fully a third of that manual is that you are a pussy because you aren't squatting enough. And if you're not squatting enough, it's because you're a pussy. <laughs> and it's like, man, <laughs> is that really useful advice? Yeah. So, I, you know, it's a whole rabbit hole. I mean, we could talk the whole call about what is wrong with the <laughs> industry and like and how we've gone wrong. But I think ultimately it comes down to kind of thinking that there are really easy answers to things and there's no magic easy answer. Um, thinking that there's a shortcut for just putting in time and, and work and reps, you know, um, and that maybe like buying one more thing or getting one more piece of information is going to be the final piece of the puzzle. Right. Um, and, and sometimes you do need more information, but you only need new information when you've already taken action on everything you already know. Right. Like you've legitimately done everything you already know how to do and you haven't gotten the results. Well, now you need something new. Yeah. But if you haven't actually done it, then you don't know if it works or doesn't, right? Yeah, yeah I couldn't agree more. That's, that's a really good point to make. And, and you know, the interesting thing is like 
all these people, like you mentioned, Dave Tate, you, we talked about the Dragon Door Camp. A lot of these people are selling these highly complex programs, you know, sure. like the Russian strength block, periodization, wave, this, you know, all this, you know, these great terms. And they don't realize that these programs that they're selling are designed for professional athletes, people yeah. whose lives are under control. You sleep from this time to this time. You eat this at this exact time of day. You minimize your stress by doing this. They're not for normal people. What's your, right. what's your take on that kind of stuff, Dave? Because that'll, that'll oh. lead us really nicely into intuitive training. Yeah, you know, you bring up such a good point because you really, you have to know when you, when you take a program or you take someone, um, someone's training, like what they're doing, you have to consider who they are and what that population is. Right. You can't just take what the, you know, Bulgarians percentages and rep schemes look like and translate that to your programming when you have to consider that some dude in Bulgaria who's Olympic weightlifting every single day, twice a day, he's, you know, probably got a gun to his head and his family's in prison somewhere until he sets a world record. <laughs> you know, he's, he's fed, been doing it since he was four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's fed the exact right amount of, you know, rice and I don't know, I guess probably not rice in Bulgaria, borscht and stew, you know, every <laughs> single day. Like, all of these things are controlled about this person and he's probably on drugs uh, to boot, you know, right. which is great. Like if you want to do drugs, do drugs, um, but use a program from someone who trains people who use drugs. If you're a natural lifter and you use a program for somebody who's using drugs, you're going to run into some problems because you're missing a whole piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So it's really something you have to be aware of when you're, when you're, looking at a program or reading a program or trying to mimic someone else. Like if you mimic only part of what they're doing, you're only going to get part of what the results are. My buddy Mark always tells a great story. Somebody asked, I don't know, I don't know where it came from, but basically somebody asked this guy, how do I get a surfer's body? And he's like, well, become a surfer. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, th there's no, there's no gym replacement for, laying around on the beach and then paddling out and surfing for a couple hours and coming back and eating a couple of fish tacos. Like there's just no way to mimic that other than doing that. Right. You bring up right. a really good point there. You know, I learned that the hard way too, Dave, because I, uh, I got Arnold's encyclopedia of modern bodybuilding about a decade or so ago. And I remember I opened the book and I just flipped straight to the contest prep <laughs> section. Right. So I was like, this is the program I'm following. And within seven days I had the flu. No yeah. joke, like two a days running and a half hour of calves and everything. I mean, I was, it was just the dumbest thing you could ever do, but I was following somebody's program that had been doing this for years, who was on drugs, so on and so forth. It was a terrible idea. Now, you mentioned a great point there, Dave. You said to, be a, to look like a surfer, you should just go out there and surf. There's no substitution. And that's yep. kind of predicated on the said principle that whatever we're doing, yeah. we are changing and adapting to. And so yep. one of the things I think that people don't realize is like, you know, if we just go do Zumba over and over again, you're going to build the Zoom, what you, what you need to do Zumba and nothing yeah. else. And I think one of the biggest things we're missing is strength and progression, right? Always making sure that, that we're getting better, stronger, better at moving, so on and so forth. And over time, if you're consistent with that, you'll make those big changes. Oh, so, absolutely. So what, what's your take on all that? I, don't, I didn't have a question there. I was just kind of making a comment. What's, what, what's your take on all that? <laughs> well, you know, you bring up a good point. Um, it's one of the reasons why I encourage people so strongly to keep a training journal. Sure. It's one of the big things that I advocate. I'm like, keep a training journal. And the reason is, if you flip back through your training journal and you go, um, all right, I'm doing the same thing I was doing in October. I'm doing the same thing I was doing in September and August. And you're not doing any better. Newsflash, you're not getting any better, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can flip through that training journal and you can look at every page and you're doing something that you hadn't done the day before and the day before, you're also probably going to be getting better in every other way. You jump on the scale, you put on some some muscle, you know, you measure whatever, like however you track that progress, you're going to see progress. Um, and that's, I mean, you're absolutely right. Just all you have to do is get better. It's really not that hard. The cool thing about the gym is you can find a million different ways to get better on any given day. Like let's say you're a surfer, for example, right? And you go out and you have a bad day of surfing. What options do you have? Like let's say you paddle out and you just can't pop up onto a wave. I mean, what can you really do other than go home and call it a day. Right. But if you go in the gym and your deadlifts aren't going well, then fucking squat. 
Right. You know, or press a kettlebell or do some grip work or just, I mean, how many things can you do in a gym? Right. I, I can't count them, right? Sure. Even if you have minimal equipment, you still can't count how many things you can possibly do. So you have all these different directions that you can get better in. Take advantage of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Well, let's, let's kind of dig into the meat and potatoes of this conversation because that really leads us in nicely, which is um, you, you teach what's called biofeedback training. Can you give us a little glimpse into what that is? Yeah. So... Um, some people may have heard of auto-regulated training, and basically, um, you know, that's nothing new. The, the Russians have talked about it since God knows when. Um, Zatsarsky wrote about it in Super Training, um, gave a, a bit, very basic template of how to auto-regulate. Um, all we're saying is, um, and I learned this from Frankie Fair as he teaches a certification called Gym Movement, um, use a biometric marker as your feedback. So, for example, we use range of motion. You could use uh, grip strength. Pavel uh, Satsuin wrote about that in a hard style magazine a couple years ago. Uh, incidentally, after we started talking about the, the range of motion testing quite a bit. <laughs> um, you could use heart rate variability. Some sure. people may have heard about uh, BioForce or iFleet. Those things are awesome. Yeah, we had Joel Jameson on the call recently. So, Oh, yeah. Joel is fantastic. Yeah. I mean... BioForce is really, really, really cool stuff. Actually, you know what? That's a little preview because I think your call is going to go up before his. So you guys will oh, have to wait right. to, to hear Joel Jameson's call on that one. <laughs> all right. So, well, you guys should look forward to it because Joel's a really smart guy. He's doing some really cool stuff. Um, so, you know, to pick on that a little bit, the, the heart rate variability is fantastic. I mean, it, the, the data on it is starting to mount to all the things it can tell you. But the problem with it is it's not specific. So sure. it might be able to tell you Hey, today your nervous system, you know, is is super depressed. Like you need to chill, you need to sleep and recover, or whatever. Uh, or it could tell you today is a really good day to train. But what it can't tell you is what it's good to train today. Um, you could, let's say, you deadlifted really heavy yesterday, and rather than depressing your nervous system, it actually fired everything up and made you really like on point today, the next day. Um, but you're done with deadlifting because of what you did yesterday. So it's a good day to train, but it's not a good day to deadlift. Sure. Um, it might be a great day to squat, for example. So what the range of motion testing does is it tells you, hey, today's a good day to squat or deadlift or press or whatever it is. And the premise is very simple. You check your range of motion, you do something, and then you see if your range of motion is worse or better, better or worse. Um, and you said you've played around with it, so you can you can attest to kind of how freaky it is. Because at first, when you hear this, you go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, that's bullshit. Like th that doesn't work. It doesn't mean anything. Whatever." 